Hello there, Cancer, and welcome back to my channel. I'm Mary Sue, and I'm so grateful that you're here. So today I am doing your October Twin Flame reading. This reading is really intended for those of you that feel like you are in a Twin Flame connection or a deep soulmate connection, whether you are separated or still in union. And we'll take a look at the overall energies for your connection with the Oracle cards, and then we'll go to the Tarot for some more details. So let's go ahead and get into your your reading. Let's see what we have for this month of October. Unfinished Symphony. Now, um, <laughs> are we surprised? Um, especially if you're in a twin flame connection, right? The connection never goes away. You may stay in separation, but that energy between the two of you seems to um, always be a constant bond. Um, and then we have a fork in the road. Okay, we're also in retrograde season, so it's, you know, it's looking like there may be some type of connection between the two of you, you know, some type of communication. So we'll go to the Tarot and we'll get, um, you know, a little bit more details with that in a minute. So let's go to the Soulmate cards. Let's see what we have here. Definitely some energy of, you know, reconnecting, um, whether that's actually in the 3D or perhaps even in the dream world. But you have a decision. Um, underneath that is all that glitters. This card has been coming out a lot lately. All that glitters really talks about, you know, putting on a mask. If you look on the top of that heap of gold, there's a mask, right? And it's about putting on like the shiny mask to hide our true feelings. And underneath that we have by the book. So by the book is about manifesting the law of attraction. What is it that you're trying to attract in? And then we have go the distance. Somebody in this connection really does want to go the, go the distance. Okay, whether that's you or the person that you're... Um, in a connection with. And it could be that, you know, this fork in the road, the big decision could have something to do about that person reaching out or you reaching out saying, hey, would you like to <laughs> reunite or, you know, just get together, see um, if there's any, you know, spark still there. <laughs> All right. Now we have free will right off the bat. I love this because it is a good reminder. Sometimes when we're in a twin flame connection, we feel like we have to be with our twin because, well, it's a twin flame connection, or even if it's a deep soulmate connection, we kind of feel like I have to be with that person. It's what we're supposed to do. But it doesn't matter. If you're in a twin flame connection and the connection is toxic, right? There is no no one that, or not or the universe would not want you to be with somebody that wasn't good for you right so it's still recognizing the fact that you do have free will sometimes that's part of the decision the energy between the two of you is so strong that you're you're kind of like you know and especially if you've done some research on twin flames and stuff you kind of feel like oh i have to be with this person they're my twin no you don't you have the right to say no at the same time you have to remember that your twin has the right to say no Ah, uh, but look at this. We have fresh start. <laughs> Somebody definitely wants a fresh start here and sacred journey. I love this. I mean, this is definitely the the twin flame journey, right? Where you could be in separation. Um, you've gone your separate ways, but now, you know, you want to try a reunion. It's just part of the twin flame journey, the sacred journey. And on the bottom is home. So it could be that the two of you are deciding or thinking about this could be part of the fork in the road. Are we going to try it again? Are we going to uh, just, you know, casually kind of, get, you know, reunite or are we actually going to, you know, go to the point where it's kind of like, yes. You know, let's go ahead and move in together or something like that. We also have cycles underneath that, um, which is part of the twin flame journey, right? Because you go, you have that, you know, bond, a <laughs> very deep connection. And then at some point you separate, you have to learn your lessons separately. And then you can sometimes come back, but you have, 
you know, you definitely have free will. And I do feel like a lot of, for a lot of you, this has been on pause. You have been separated from this person. So, um, you know, astrologically, we're in the retrogrades, which does sometimes have, you know, people or situations from the past come back. And then so that we can take another look at it, we can, you know, refine the lesson that we're supposed to be learning with that connection. And then on October 18th, all the planets, all the planets are direct. And that is when you could possibly have this fresh start. Like this person would probably perhaps, you know, uh, reach out to you before the 18th, but then after the 18th, you may make the decision, you know, if you want to reunite. But once again, you have free will. Okay, here's your present energy moving forward quickly. Whether that is with this reunion or if you're just going to be wanting to move forward by yourself, we are going to, um, clarify these energies, but it's a great energy to me The you know, the, um, the, the chariot card is also a sign of victory, you know, understanding the lessons that you're supposed to learn and moving forward quickly with a lot of progress. Um, in the traditional tarot, it's, you know, the white horse and the black horse and the driver um, is having to control both of them in order to get the chariot to move forward. It's about balancing, learning how to balance um, learning how to balance the old and the new, you know, um, allowing the lessons of the past to help you to control the future. Um, it's a really nice energy, the chariot card. It's one of my favorite cards because it really does mean, you know, you're going to be victorious in moving forward and move forward quickly. Okay, so let's go ahead. This is your obstacle is a strong foundation, you know, celebrating what it is that you want. Um, I think especially with this fork in the road, it's about really, you know, getting clear about what is it that is going to help this relationship have a strong foundation. If you have been separated, part of that separation is that each of you has to, you know, find your independence or, you know, learn your own lessons, work on some, some, you know, you know, part of your soul's journey. You have to go through that. Um, and it's only so that when the two of you come back together, and this is also the 1111 card, which is another sign of a twin flame connection. Um, it's also the wedding card. It's about having a strong foundation. It's the thing that you didn't have in the past, because if you had a strong foundation, then the relationship would not have um, you know, separated. So it's about getting that strong foundation. It's about taking a really good look about King of Pentacles, how to be grounded. What pulled you apart perhaps in the past had something to do with finances or career choices or, you know, the amount of times one of you was putting into a career, something like that. It doesn't have to be, but it is. I love the King of Pentacles. It's also another sign. Um, the King and Queen of Pentacles is kind of like the epitome of the married couple, <laughs> whatever you want to say. But in tarot, it's kind of like the King and the Queen of Pentacles are the super grounded ones, you know, very nurturing of each other, very nurturing of their family. They go the distance. And remember, we have the distance underneath there. So this is kind of interesting because it's like um, another sign. The King of Pentacles is a very grounded energy. It's about finding that stability in your relationship. Okay, so let's take a look at your advice. Ten of Swords. Now, this is your advice. <laughs> um, the Ten of Swords is a very difficult ending. It's, you know, the, the Tenth Sword in the back type of energy. It's also that, you know, in this deck, it's about something is needling your, your, your brain, okay? Or needling like your intuition, your crown chakra. There's something, there's a little niggle there. Um, so it's like your intuition is trying to tell you something, 
um, about perhaps the ending of this relationship or what happened in the past, something that put you into separation, there's a little niggle there and we are going to clarify, but the niggle is also helping you to understand what um, you need in order to have a strong foundation. And that's part of your lessons, you know, that you and your twin are, are working on. Queen of Wands on the bottom, I like this energy, it is about, you know, being independent, um, being very confident, being very, um, you know, adventurous, working really hard, you know, on your finances, creativity, that type of energy. And nine of wands on the bottom of that. Six of pentacles, bringing this into um, balance. And, you know, gender doesn't matter here. It's just the energy of the queen of wands becoming, um, you know, putting down your anxieties. The nine of uh, wands is kind of like your, your um, I'm sorry, it's about like putting down your boundaries, like working on your boundaries bringing your boundaries into balance. So it could be, and a lot of times twin flame connections are, you know, they can be codependent. Um, there can be that, you know, uh, you know, trace of codependency underneath uh, the relationship. And the codependency is really just, you know, because you're trying to refine your own soul's lessons. So you're attracting somebody that helps to bring that out of you. So in twin flame connections, they do tend to be kind of codependent. Um, so it's about bringing the, that into balance, bringing your own confidence, you know, allowing your confidence, your independence, your, your creativity to come out, not like allowing this relationship to um, chip away at that. So that could, you know, that may not resonate for everybody, but if you were in a relationship or in a relationship with this person, they could have kind of like chipped away at your confidence in some way, in, you know, some toxic codependent way. They could have chipped away, but it's about you really putting up the boundaries and protecting yourself, your independence when you come back into union, if you do, so that the energy can be very balanced within the connection. Um, underneath that, we have the full card. Um, you know, the full card represents being willing to take a risk, <laughs> you know, um, uh, taking a risk, whether that means to you, whether you're going to go, you know, solo, stay solo, or if you are going to reunite, because I do feel like you have a big decision coming up. Okay, so let's see what the outcome is. And remember, you do have free will. Ace of Pentacles, the Page of Wands. Okay, the Page of Wands is about learning new things, you know, and to me, a lot of times it's about learning those spiritual lessons that you needed to learn along the way. You're learning more about your twin, but you're also learning more about yourself. It's kind of like when you start dissecting, if you will, your twin, right? You start recognizing, oh, wait a minute, because twins mirror each other. You can see that part of yourself in your twin. You know, a lot of times the things that you don't like about your twin is also what you don't like about yourself. Um, we have the Ace of Pentacles. You know, the Ace of Pentacles is a solid offer, whatever that is. Okay, that's coming in for you. It's a solid offer. A lot of times it's tangible too. So I really feel like your twin, you're definitely getting some kind of a message here or something um, it, that there is a solid offer and it's also a symbol of a truth. So I do feel like when your twin if your if your twin <laughs> reaches out or if you reach out to your twin, okay, either way, um, that the truth is going to be told in whatever it is or whatever is being offered. It's, it's a solid. With the Ace of Pentacles, it's solid. It's honest. Okay, so let's take a look at the Chariot card. Well, okay, I have my deck upside down. I am going to reshuffle. Okay, there we go. 
All right, chariot card, five of wands, seven of cups, four of pentacles, page of wands again. So page of wands, there's a lot of inspiration. You know, the wands is also about that attraction, you know, the physical part of the attraction. Uh, twin flames normally have that, which is true. So we have the five of wands. To me, the five of wands is about a lot of drama. Uh, twin flame connections can have a lot of drama in them. Um, looking at other options, the chaos also around the drama, and then the Four of Pentacles, holding on, holding on. Somebody here is wanting to hold on to the drama, and somebody else is wanting to move forward, getting away from the drama. So you can take it as it resonates, and when you do Twin Flame readings, it's really hard because the energy of both can come in. But I really see that somebody is kind of holding on to the drama and the chaos of the past. And somebody else is like, I'm out of here. <laughs> I, don't, I don't need that in my life. Um, so that is kind of interesting. That is possibly why you're still kind of in a pause. Um, so let's take a look at the obstacle. We have the four of wands being clarified by the death, the ace of wands, the nine of cups, and the hanged man. Somebody needs a different perspective of this situation. Um, and remember, this is your obstacle or this is what you're resisting. What you're, you or, the, or your twin, somebody here is resisting having a stable foundation. It needs, that perspective needs to be changed. And I think that there is a change coming in with the Ace of Wands. It's a spark. Somebody wants a new fresh start. With the Ace of Wands, it's a new fresh start for the Nine of Cups. Now, we did have the full card. Some of you could be trying to move away from the drama, um, move forward quickly that you want, you know, you don't have stability in your life. And what you are trying to do is get stability. You know, you're, you're getting inspired of, I've got to go get my nine of cups, whatever that is. Really nice energy as far as I really get a sense, Cancer, that you are the one that's wanting to move forward. Um, and the energy of your twin could be holding you back. Yeah, seven of wands, nine of swords, tower. There is there is a tower moment. Now, I don't, I, I feel like the tower moment in this case is an epiphany. Let's go to the ten of swords. I feel like the twin that is holding on to the drama is going to have some type of epiphany. Um, and that happens a lot because when one of you is moving forward, um, then the other one is kind of like, hey, wait a minute. <laughs> Don't leave me behind. It's that type of energy. Okay, Ten of Swords. We have the Queen of Swords, the King of Swords, and the Queen of Wands. Hmm, tower moment again. Okay, the tower, let's take a look at this. We have the Five of Cups, Judgment, King of Cups, Ace of Pentacles, Two of Cups. Wow, look at this. Yeah, there's there's some epiphany or tower moment that occurs here that the King of Cups, you know, and, um, you know, that is a water sign, um, it could be, but it's kind of like uh, the King of Cups also represents getting on top of your emotions, expressing your emotions. Somebody here wants to express their emotions. All right. So I have a feeling, Cancer, that there was an end to this relationship. The truth that you may not know or you may know the truth is, and I feel like you're going to find out this truth very soon if you don't already know it, is that, you know, I think, I know that you're not air sign. These are air signs, but I'm going to read this as that this, would, this is like you and your twin, okay? And I know you're not air signs, but you got to the really logical part. This is kind of like, when you were together, it was very logical. It got analytical. It got mechanical, okay? There wasn't a lot of passion anymore in it because what happened was it's kind of like 
the two of you and remember you mirror each other and look at the king and queen of swords are sitting there this is exactly how they came out okay are sitting there looking at each other and it's kind of like you were nitpicking each other so <laughs> maggie snoring sorry you were like nitpicking each other i don't like this about you well, that's fine because I don't like this about you. It's kind of like you were analyzing your twin, but in analyzing your twin, you actually, you, it, 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 I think it ended up being the ending of your relationship. But at the same time, this is where you learned your, your, um, your, your wisdom. Because you looked at your twin, you saw what you didn't like in your twin, and then all of a sudden it was like, oh, yeah, that's something I, need to work on maybe not exactly the same thing but similar okay so now we have the queen of wands so the queen of wands is very passionate <laughs> right like there needs to be some passion put into this relationship now the other way i'm going to read this too is that the two of you got i'm gonna say sideways because i think when the king and the queen of swords are together you know, it is a court pair, but it's really analytical. It's very mechanical. It's, it's there's no warmth here. It's all ice. It, it's an icy, right? There could have been a queen of wands that came around. And the king of wands was like, yeah, that's fiery. I think I'll go that way. Now, you're the one that has to know whether this was a three, third party that you were in or not. But if it was a third party, it's the reason that this ended. If it's not the reason that it ended, then the truth is, is that it just got too nitpicky, right? And it lacked passion. In order to, you know, this is ice, icy. It needs to be warmed up with some passion. It needs the spark put back into this relationship. Okay, so I also got the message that, you know, it could be that you have some, somebody is trying to manifest this coming back together. It's interesting because I don't really have a lot of cups. I don't think I have any cups. Lots of pentacles, which means that it's trying to be grounded. The energy of the, the cards are trying to be grounded. I'm going to clarify. There is some uh, tower, either a tower moment where you find out that there was a queen of wands or there's some epiphany about how to reignite the passion in this connection that, you know because we have the fresh start right i mean it's kind of like something has oh <laughs> oh <laughs> okay yeah it was the passion was gone the passion was gone. And the reason that the passion was gone is because there was just, it got to the point where it was just, you were, the two of you, both of you, you you were mirroring each other. You were just like, it was like an old married couple, just nitpicking each other, you know, analyzing, analyzing the relationship. You may have even gone to counseling or therapy and it was just all analyzing, analyzing, all up in your head. There's no heart here. There's no emotion. There's no spark, right? It's just got so up in your head. You may have even been talking about, well, how do we fix this? You know, how do we fix this? But what you forgot was that you just needed some passion. Okay, so <laughs> when I clarified the... The Queen of Wands, look at what I have. The Lover's Card, okay, Twin Flame Connection. Very attached to it and trying to work on it. Like, I really think the Queen of Wands is just, you need some passion in this, to juice up <laughs> this uh, connection. Yeah, it's, it's just um, putting the passion back into it. Okay, so let's see what this Ace of Pentacles is. Nine, okay, somebody's bringing in, you're stepping into a new chapter, whether it's, you know, you have the free will, you have the free will card, um, you know, you or the other person really kind of still caught up in the head, 
trying to, you know, make sure they're not making a mistake. It's kind of like this sense of, I don't want to make a mistake. Somebody's bringing in an offer or you are giving out an offer and it is a loving offer. It's a truth, but it's also loving. This person may come in and tell you the truth. Yes, there was a queen of wands. Or this person may come in and tell you the truth. Hey, we just got to jazz it up, right? I mean, it's there's something that they're going to come in, but they're going to be doing it in a very loving way. And there, it's, there's a lot of love in this because what they want is they want to step into a new chapter with you. There's definitely an energy. Yeah, they want to go the distance. They want to make this long term. They're pretty determined about it. Um, I feel like a lot of them are kind of like watching you, trying to gather information about you. And then look at this. We have the sun card, like lots of joy and happiness. It's a really lovely energy. I feel like when they come in and tell you this truth, you, you may be like, I don't know. I don't know. Like nervous. Like they may call you up and they say, hey, let's go get coffee. Right. And you're like, oh, no, 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 you know, or whatever. Or maybe, you know, I think you agree. You go and you meet them or they call you or you talk to them, something. Right. And, you know, their offer is, hey, and I think we head home. I think that they're offering, hey, let's give this another shot. You know, like getting really serious about it, not going slow. And I think you're going to. Um, and be, oh no, I don't know. I, you know, hey, I got on top of everything. I don't know if I want to go back into this. But I feel like they really are going to, um, you know, make this offer. And it's, uh, the cards are showing that it's a truthful offer. It's, you know, something that's coming from the heart. Definitely coming from the heart. Okay, so let's go. And you got the lover's card here. I think, you know, it's the passion um, that, you know, something about passion, definitely. <laughs> okay, so let's go to the romance cards. Yes. Oh, my gosh. Flirt. Look at this, right? It's about the passion. Love yourself first. And, you know, that's part of this Queen of Wands energy, too, is that, you know, the Queen of Wands is very confident. She loves herself. She loves the way she looks. She loves the way she she moves. She loves the way she does everything, right? She's extremely confident and very passionate. And, you know, it's kind of like, yeah, love yourself first. Make sure you're putting yourself first because when you're in a twin flame connection, it's very hard to lose yourself in that energy but it's like no make sure you stay in that energy of loving yourself first because that is po possibly the lesson that you had to learn here and then we have it is safe for you to love and past life relationship <laughs> it's kind of like yeah <laughs> it's all here <laughs> okay let's see what your creativity oracle card has well cancer it's really a nice energy here it really is introspection introspection is often necessary to deepen our awareness of the unity and divinity of life sometimes we do need to get up in our heads and really kind of analyze it right i mean it is it is part of the journey is when we're looking at at it from different perspectives all right um you know the king and queen of swords they always tell their truth you know, and maybe that's what it is. It's about like you, the two of you have to sit down and really tell your truth about why you think this relationship came to an end. And then you make up. <laughs> I couldn't resist. I couldn't resist. The cards were there. Okay. Ah, your lover's oracle card. And on the messages, only time will tell. Yeah, that's so true, isn't it? <laughs> well, Cancer, I hope you enjoyed this message. I really enjoyed doing it for you. And if you resonated with it, I would really appreciate it if you would consider like, sharing, or subscribing. And I do wish you much love and light in this connection and all your connections. And I hope to see you again really soon. Bye for now.